tonight, what marriage equality New Zealand wants you to know about same-sex marriage. Hi everyone, welcome to the program. My name is Andrew Whiteside. Tonight we're talking about same-sex marriage. My guest is Jeremy Lambert, who represents Marriage Equality New Zealand. In August this year, the New Zealand Parliament introduced a marriage amendment bill which, if passed, will allow same-sex marriage in New Zealand. But what are the chances of it passing? We've just seen marriage amendments killed off in our nearest neighbour, Australia. Could the same happen here? Jeremy, thank you for joining me. Uh, lovely to have you here. Let's kick off just by looking at um, Marriage Equality New Zealand. It's probably obvious, but tell me about the aims and the goals. Well, Marriage Equality, the campaign here in Auckland, is part of a broader network of campaigners who are fighting for marriage equality right across New Zealand. Um, obviously, the focus here in Auckland is largely around getting the support of probably the biggest collection of gay and lesbian groups that we have in the country. They're based here in Auckland because we have the biggest population of gay and lesbian New Zealanders here in Auckland City. So our focus locally is around making sure that the local community understands how well the bill is progressing, how they can support the progress of the bill, but also we have a responsibility to coordinate with the campaign nationally so we can understand in Wellington, for instance, which MPs need to be lobbied and then we can deploy our resources here accordingly. So what are you literally saying to people in the gay community now? What, what do they need to do? Well, they need to tell their stories very, very quickly because we're in the middle of what's called the select committee process where submissions have been called before the select committee. The closing date for those submissions is the 26th of October and people can send these submissions directly to Parliament by post or they can go to the Marriage Equality website, which is marriageequality.co.nz and they can make these submissions online. What's the general plan in terms of Parliament and the procedure? So it, it'll go to committee, then it'll have its second reading and third reading. What's the likelihood that we'll see all of this done before the end of the year? Oh, it won't happen before the end of the year. So the report back from Select Committee isn't due until the end of February next year. It's at that stage, depending upon what the calendar is like for the Parliament in terms of their schedule of legislation before the House, uh, that then the second reading will be reported back to Parliament in February, and then we will see the subsequent third reading, hopefully in March, April of next year. It seems a long time, doesn't it? It is, but one of the beauties of our Parliament is that we have this quite open public consultation process. And so that means that's the chance for gay and lesbian New Zealanders in relationships to tell their stories. Um, so yes, it's a long process, but also I think it's pretty fundamental for us to gather the support that we require to ensure we have the numbers at the end of the day. I'm interested to know from, from the organisation's perspective, we, we have civil unions in this country which give uh, lesbian and gay people the same rights as a married couple. Why push for marriage equality through the Marriage Act? Why is that important? Interestingly, we don't have the same rights, uh, particularly around adoption. So married couples can adopt. Interestingly, a single gay man can adopt. A de facto couple can adopt but a couple in a civil union can't. So we don't have equal rights at the moment. We also have difficulties because a lot of gay or same-sex couples who have had civil unions like to travel. And those civil unions, particularly when they go into one of the 11 countries that recognises gay marriage, their relationship isn't recognised. And so it's important that we understand firstly that there isn't equal recognition at the moment for civil union and married couples. Secondly, though, I think there is a perceived status around a marriage versus a civil union. And although it might be almost legal equality, I think there is a view amongst some New Zealanders that marriage perhaps is a slightly better status than civil unions. Whether or not same-sex couples buy into that, uh, that's up to them. But certainly I think there is an argument that says that there is a level of status that some New Zealanders perceive to be around marriage. And really, if we were an equal society, then all couples should be entitled to marry regardless of whether they're a man and a man, woman and woman, or a man and a woman. And I guess that's the thing, isn't it? That, that you know, when we had the equal rights legislation, human rights legislation, a few years ago, the government initially was exempt, but then all legislation was supposed to be uh, was supposed to include lesbian and gay people. So I guess there is a point of principle as well that the separate but equal doesn't really cut it. 
You know, I think it's actually a real point in terms of creating a, an open and inclusive society. You know, New Zealand has one of the highest teenage suicide rates in the world. I think around about 29 um, in 100,000 uh, youth in New Zealand commit suicide or, or attempt to commit suicide. And so those sorts of statistics, you know, it's no accident that we have this, you know, over-representation of gay and lesbian teenagers who are trying to harm themselves. What's your sense of how the debate's going, both in Parliament and in the country? Interestingly, I don't think the campaign thought that we would necessarily see as strong a vote in support of marriage equality as we saw in the first reading. And it was heartening to see that actually the level of support, which was around about two to one in favour of marriage equality, reflected what the polls were telling us, that essentially two versus one New Zealanders were in support of marriage equality. So we were kind of surprised that we got such a strong showing of support uh, in the parliament. That being said, we're realistic. We know that we probably won't get that level of support in the second and third readings. And it's because of that uncertainty that we're really trying to motivate the community to make sure that they have their voices heard as part of the select committee process. I was surprised to see John Banks voting in favour, given his really quite revolting things he said during the homosexual law reform period in the 80s. Um, that was quite a surprise. What, what was your take on it? I think John Banks is showing that you know he really deserves his representation in Epsom to a lot of young ACT supporters getting in and making sure that on the ground he had a campaign that was worth supporting. And so I think he would have received quite a lot of pressure uh, from young ACT members saying, if you want my support next time, you better support marriage equality. This, this is a really important point, isn't it? Because there seems to be in New Zealand almost a generational gap on this issue, that young people, it doesn't seem to be an issue at all. No, and um, you're right, there is a generational issue which meant that we were very nervous going into the first reading because the parliament isn't reflective of the demographic of New Zealand society. It's far more male, it's far more white, it's far more middle class and it's far older. And so that was part of our nervousness when we went to the vote the first time. I'm interested in what's happened in Australia because we've seen uh, Queensland has gone quite right wing with its government. It's started to roll back some of the, the rights that lesbian and gay people have had in the state. In the federal level, so the Senate and the House have um, both shot down same-sex marriage um, proposals. And now Tasmania, and there's a lot of belief that Tasmania would go and support same-sex marriage in the state parliament. And that's knocked back. What are your thoughts about that and, and do you think there could be some roll-on effect to New Zealand? Hmm. I think Australian politics is so much more complex than New Zealand politics simply because of the levels of jurisdictions they have there. I mean in New Zealand we have a unitary parliament which means we have a single house whereas in Australia and the United States they have the, the state and federal system which makes moving through progressive legislation that much more difficult. It's also difficult in Australia because the Liberal and National parties essentially whipped their members in the federal government, which means that they were forced to take the party position on marriage equality, which was to say no. And it's interesting that in the New South Wales state parliament, the members of the Liberal government there have been told they can vote with their conscience. And so I think that's going to be the real test, will be when the New South Wales state parliament uh, required to vote on the issue because I think of all of the states in Australia they would be amongst the most liberal. They have the largest gay and lesbian community in Australia. So I think it's going to be a, a very uh, interesting vote. What are the benefits do you think of, um, of being able to marry? Well quite often I think particularly as gay and lesbian transgendered communities we get caught up on legal equality. But what's interesting in the research is that Marriage was actually the first non-biological factor to be associated with people living longer, healthier and happier lives. Um, I don't think research has been done to see whether or not civil unions would have that same effect. But I think there is something to be said for the impact that the institution of marriage has had on delivering stability. Um, it does confer responsibilities of care between partners so that when something happens and the state isn't picking up responsibility but the married partner does. It also confers rights and responsibilities around the care of children so that gay and lesbian couples are then not having to prove their parenthood in a court of law. Um, that comes automatically through 
the institution of marriage. So I think there are some real individual benefits from marriage, but also some societal ones in that it creates an inclusive, uh, cohesive society at the same time. I think that segues very nicely into my final question. What is it, do you think, it takes to have um, a happy, fulfilled, successful kind of life? I'm not an expert in this area, um, but certainly some things that I've seen, not just in myself, but with my friends, is certainly um, having healthy relationships, uh, regardless of whether or not it's your primary one-on-one -on -one relationship with your partner, but certainly having good friendships um, would be one factor in, in having a, a happy life so that you're connected with the community. Um, I'd say another is you know, looking after your health, um, you know, and if you're, you're living well and looking after your body and looking after your spirit, um, certainly that's a, a good way of, of having a happy, healthy life as well. Um, but certainly thinking about marriage perhaps uh, for some people might also lead you to, to some form of an extended life and, and happiness. Jeremy, thank you so much for your time. Re mm. Really appreciate it. Thanks, Andrew.